when the scaffolding first come down, they were a bit kind of taken back by it. It's just they were opening their curtains. First thing they see was a, a skull and angel wings. And, to, and one of the old ladies actually said over there, she said, when you get to 80 and uh, you open your curtains and you're staring death in the face every day, you know, it's a, it's a little bit worrying. I mean, I, I spoke to a couple of graffiti artists, um, but one of the reasons that I was quite interested in getting Aaron involved was because of what he's doing at Inspire. Well, we try our best, you know, to live up to live up to that name, you know, Inspire. We, you know, do whatever we can to, you know, um, express our whatever creativity we feel, you know, and um, basically uh, we specialize in different areas. And one of the areas that, or an area that I specialize in is basically uh, painting murals, painting pictures, you know, yeah. Obviously, once I met Paul, I could sense that Paul had a, a really, uh, really strong love you know, for art and creativity, and I sense that he really wanted to um, give something good, you know, to the people in the community. He really wanted to make um, the Tubman someplace special, you know, give his all to it. My, uh, I'm going to get a little bit uh, philosophical, you know, if you don't mind for a second, but um, when they have murals and paintings on the wall, it's kind of like a, a flower blossoming, you know what I mean? You know, in springtime, a flower blossoms and you get to see all the colors. You know, you get to see the beauty of that flower for the winter, you can't see it. You know, when people can see beautiful imagery and pictures, that is actually, I think it's a really, really good thing. The controversy seems to have died down amongst the people, but the council are still pursuing me. It's, it's one particular person from the planning department who's like a dog with a bone and he doesn't want to let it go. And what their argument is, is that Flares hasn't got any text written on their building, so therefore it's not an advert, it's just purely artwork. So I suggested to him that what I should do is maybe take the Tubman logo off the top. And then he came back and said, no, what their actual issue is, is the skull. So it's kind of, you know, it, it, they've got a very, very weak argument as to why it should come down. And, and, you know, I'm quite happy to argue the toss right until the end, you know. It's kind of have garnered quite a lot of public support via Facebook. We've got 1,500 members on a Save the Tubman Mural Facebook group. We've probably got about four to 5,000 signatures on a petition, um, which is mainly down at Inspire. A lot of people have gone into Inspire and signed a petition there. We've also got a petition running here. There is a clear argument to say that, that, that the, the front of the pub isn't in keeping with the local area. But then, if you look at the local area, the local area is quite depressed. You've got the Observer Building next door, which is boarded up. You know, it, w would they be happier if the front of the pub was boarded up or the pub was shut down and it was derelict, like the Hastings Observer Building? I've had Germans come in that have kind of seen it on Facebook. I saw, had an American come in that had seen it on the television. Um, I've had old people come in that said they didn't like the front of the building, but they felt that I should be able to do what I wanted with the front of my building. So there's all kinds of angles that it's kind of appealed to people. Today, actually, a cab driver was outside the front of the shop and the guy's like, hey, how you doing? And then the guy's like, uh, he's like, how's things going with the mural? He's like, I really like it. It's much better than it was before. So, you know, that, you know, in a nutshell, that's kind of like the vibe, you know, people overall, I think are happy to see it.